In today's conversation, I'd like to discuss the definite chief aim, inspired by Think and Grow Rich, which is fulfilling your burning desire in imagination, mental transmutation, and allowing it to be automatically brought forth through you via the power of your subconscious mind, as we discussed in Sunday's video, which means allowing the power within you to take your thoughts in harmony with your definite chief aim and externalize them for you to bring forth your vision in spirit of harmony with all. And also in a fun, calm, cheerful way, as Napoleon Hill stated, the object of your definite chief aim should become your hobby. You should ride this hobby continuously. You should sleep with it, eat with it, play with it, work with it, live with it, and think with it. Now we know that Napoleon Hill's work was inspired by ancient alchemy and hermetic philosophy. If you read it in detail, you'll see it. Words like transmutation, holy guardian angel, and the idea of thoughts creating reality, which is true as everything in this world was first once imagined. And you choose the thoughts that are directed by the unseen power, as it is stated here in a classic hermetic text known as the Corpus Hermeticum. Here we see Hermes, who is Thoth from ancient Egypt, say in the 11th book, there were two gifts bestowed freely upon humanity, which means given by grace, and they were mind and speech. And this was not to enslave us, but rather to set us free. As it says here, they are equal to immortality. And it follows that if one employs them for what they ought, they will differ nothing from the immortals. And so this world may seem to tell you what to think or not think for that matter in relation to your definite chief aim. If inharmonious, have no part in it. And if you're doing that, no shame, put off that former conversation. And thus, what should you ought to think? Well, that's up to you. Listen to your heart and intuition. It reveals what you are destined to become. As you thinketh in your heart, so are you. And speaking of heart and intuition in relation to the Corpus Hermeticum, it's interesting how thoth sounds like thought. And he was said to have given magic, art, and alchemy to humanity and was said to have taught us the use of mind and speech. And it's interesting how, if we go back to antiquity uh, related to my experience and related to the present, what was thought in antiquity was at times seemingly discouraged for me growing up in some schools of thought in which thinking for myself and even thinking in general was discouraged, indicating that I shouldn't even think which upon reflection was doubt-based programming playing out. However, during that time, I would read the Bible and it would say otherwise, stating that what you think inside is done for you by the unseen power, as stated in Romans 12 too. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. The room is your mind. And prayer is speech. It doesn't say don't think for yourself or to not think in general. It says your father who is unseen will reward you by what you speak inside. So I released identification to those beliefs that told me what to think or not think where I was being a puppet at that time to those inharmonious beliefs, surrendering free will to that belief system in general, which is a state of consciousness. Remember, you are free you have formless awareness, and you consciously choose the state you occupy. I suggest the ideal state, which some of my friends refer to as no state, in which everything happens ideally and automatically, as you think feelingly, ideally, as applicable, done for you by the unseen power. It's also mentioned in the beginning of Book 11 of the Corpus Hermeticum. The mind, O Tat, is of the very essence of God, if there be any essence of God. So we know then consciousness is the only reality. And in the center of your consciousness, you find your formless center of being, which from there be the blessings of the conscious and subconscious aspects of consciousness. You think yourself into, dwell in, and think from 
as applicable from your definite chief aim. What you consciously think in consciousness, then, via the subconscious aspect of mind, which stores what you now believe is true, which can be your definite chief aim, as an already established fact, which by that no signs or confirmation is needed from this outer world. If you see them and find them helpful, then fine. But you don't need them because your vision is fact. That's faith. This power then takes the contents of your subconscious mind in relation to your definite chief aim and externalizes them for you as the conditions and circumstances that are in harmony with bringing forth your vision in a loving way. And so there's no power outside of you greater unless you want to believe that. What you imagine happens. It's done for you. That is the conscious use of the two gifts, mind and speech. And there are no enemies in mind that contradict unless you create them. Thought forms and thought entities have no power over you unless you assign them the power. And so suggest inside, I am safe in my mind. I am complete inside. I have everything. And all in loving harmony shows up in a mutually beneficial way to contribute in bringing forth my definite chief aim. And so to dissolve anything inharmonious mentally, you lovingly take your attention away from it mentally. Consciousness is reality. And so how do you take your attention away from it lovingly? Well, one way I've been doing for almost two decades is crafting, entering, and living from a definite chief aim. The power changes everything and your attention automatically remains in what is in harmony and contribution inside, which reflects as such outside. So we see then, this has nothing to do with trying to ignore or deny. Reality is infinite. We let it be and our attention automatically goes to what is in harmony and in contribution to realizing your definite chief aim. So I'm a firm believer in having a definite chief aim, and more so today than ever before. We live in a wonderful time. The degree of prosperity we see today is greater than ever before. Countless ideas, opportunities, and ways of thinking here on the internet, and with the breakthroughs in technology we see compounding each day, it has brought about two experiences, one of which I'd like to focus on today. One is that there is so much information and seemingly conflicting opinions and beliefs that if a person doesn't know how to apply what is relevant, they may find themselves polarized by the information and drifting accordingly, rather than applying what is applicable to living the life that they desire to live, having the kind of life that they want to have in love and prosperity. And prosperity is however you define it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to define prosperity. What I'm going to discuss today is the second kind of experience of the two, which is for you to allow the power of your subconscious mind to steer your life in an ideal way via a definite chief aim. So what's a definite chief aim? I learned this in 2004 from Thinking Grow Rich, and I still apply it till this day. I remember my first definite chief aim was to get out of $50,000 debt. I said it when I read the book, and it worked. I cleared the debt and also saved up enough to buy my first house. And since then, every definite chief aim that I've ever set was realized. And I always wrote them on a card and carried them with me to recalibrate my mind to operate from the state of the wish fulfilled whenever I fell out of it. So let's explore the definite chief aim formula by Napoleon Hill. He says, by whatever date, and you can choose the date if you like, I will have in my possession, which could be a monetary amount, or some measurable result, which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during the interim. In return for this money or result, I will give the most efficient service for which I am capable, rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best possible quality of service in the capacity of whatever, you could say salesperson, profession, or career, or describe the products or services you intend to offer. I believe that I will have this money in my possession. My faith is so strong that I can now see this money before my eyes. I can touch it with my hand. It is now awaiting transfer to me at the time and in the proportion that I deliver the service. I intend to render in return for it. 
I am awaiting a plan by which to accumulate this money, and I will follow that plan when it is received. And that's it. You could even condense it into a card like I do and carry it with you. Now, Bruce Lee also created and lived a wonderful life as a result of having a definite chief aim. He said this in relation to being a superstar in the United States, and I'll read it here. He says, I, Bruce Lee, will in return give the most exciting performances and render the best of quality in the capacity of an actor. Starting 1970, I will achieve world fame. And from then onwards, till the end of 1980, which was the year I was born, I will have in my possession $10 million. I will live the way I please and achieve inner harmony and happiness. Bruce Lee, January 1969. Now, the definite chief aim is a nice calibrator so that we could observe from the lens of our definite chief aim. If anything shows up that we undesirably polarize to, we release the identification to that belief in mind. And if that belief seems to persist, we apply auto-suggestion to release identification to that belief in mind. And I always, and you could see it as well, releasing identification to a belief is easy and fun. Transformation doesn't have to be stressful or uncomfortable. It can be fun and artful. Also remember, Thoth, who was sometimes referred to as a trickster, like a playful trickster, was said to have brought art and alchemy to humanity. And this is the whole premise of my subconscious mind program and everything on my channel. You already know what you want and you already know how to get there. Have fun, remain in your flow, listen to yourself and trust yourself by realizing that everything else is secondary to your heart and intuition. That way, whatever circumstance shows up that seems to deny your definite chief aim, it actually doesn't. You can see it for how it truly is, which is in harmony and in contribution to your vision. Transmuting that seeming challenge into an opportunity or an alchemy, as we say, that base metal into gold. And again, not needed to be done from a place of force. It is done for you by the unseen power within you effortlessly. You simply imagine that's the way it is and it's done for you. Exactly how we discussed in last Sunday's video. I'll link in the description to it. So your definite chief aim is a compass and all your other desires are in harmony and in contribution with it. And all of them are in harmony and contribution with each other. And they tie together in perfect symphony as they're all interconnected and related to your definite chief aim, like how James Allen said in his book, As a Man Thinketh. Very soon, so altered has their mind become that the workshop can no longer hold them. It has become so out of harmony with their mentality that it falls out of their lives as a garment is cast aside. And with the growth of opportunities, which fit the scope of their expanding powers, they pass out of it forever. And at the same time, all of disharmony appearing to release, which is a result of inner release, all in harmony and in contribution shows up automatically in a mutually beneficial way in relation with your definite chief aim, as he says here. Dream, lofty dream. And as you dream, so shall you become. Your vision is the promise of what you shall one day be. Your ideal is the prophecy of what you shall at last unveil. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, it's easy for me to persist towards the realization of my definite chief aim, as it is the magic elixir for the mind to transform all areas of my life. So it is easy thus to observe without reacting the unseen power within me, transmute seeming obstacles into opportunities oriented from harmony with my definite chief aim to purify mine into all that is honest, lovely, pure, and true. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.